Now, the diamond rush in an impoverished KwaZulu-Natal community has ended with the announcement that the stones dug up are, in fact, not diamonds, but quartz crystals. Economic Development MEC Ravi Pillay making that announcement following an investigation by the Council of Geosciences and the Department of Mineral Resources. Plans are now afoot to investigate the possibility of other underground resources like shale gas or water. Let's unpack the story for you now. Dr. Gideon Grunewald is a geologist and joins us uh, for more. Uh, Dr. Grunewald, it's great to have you with us on the show this morning. I think possibly one of the big questions that many of our viewers will have is that that announcement by uh, Ravi Pillay yesterday said the value of these quartz crystals compared to diamonds was low, but that doesn't mean they're, they're still not somewhat valuable? Uh, uh, good morning to your listeners as well. The, the most important thing is that these uh, quartz crystals, if they are of the clear quartz variety, if, they, if they're not milky in color and they look like little glass pieces, and that is why they were confused with diamonds, mm. these quartz crystals have value. They, they're not valueless. Uh, I mean, you don't throw them away at all. Mm. I mean, I know it's difficult for you to say uh, when you haven't held one in your hand physically what they might be worth. But perhaps you can give us like a scale of possibilities of what their worth is. Well, your, 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 the quartz crystals are used in, for instance, the making of, of timekeeping devices like mm -hmm. watches. You know, you'll see on the little watch, it says quartz, uh, quartz watch. So the quartz crystal vibrates at a very, very constant vibration. And uh, scientists have used this mostly to, to then keep time. So they're very valuable for that. Mm -hmm. But they must be pure. They must be pure. Mm -hmm. And so your quartz crystal will uh, differ in, in, in sort of value from anything from one cent uh, a, 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 now a carrot is a third of a gram mm -hmm. so they will be about a cent a carrot and then up to 105 rands for a carrot okay so one quartz crystal can 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 easily uh, reach anything up to five or six hundred rand if it's if it's very pure mm. very interesting indeed what did you make of of government's response since the start of of the story when people first began digging and said they were discovering what they thought at the time was a precious stone. I think it is very important that we that we actually uh, commend government on not overreacting immediately. Uh, you know, uh, people falling over their feet to go and, and and get people off the ground and and all kinds of stuff. They they I think they were very careful in moving in. They made very sure of what the answer would be. They discussed with the people. And for me, this exercise is one of the most important moments in time for South Africa, where the the normal public, our normal people out there in the field, the shepherd boys can learn the difference between valuable minerals in South Africa and, and, and these courts, which is not that valuable, but at least we are teaching our people. And I think that is extremely important for South Africa. Yeah. I mean, just given the kind of enthusiasm with which this community went after digging for these diamonds, there's an opportunity here for education, perhaps in the field. Uh, absolutely, and I think that is what I got this morning from uh, one of the interviews. Is the the the, the Council for Geoscience definitely have a plan to to do some proper research? What we need to do now, we need to know why there are so many quartz crystals. I mean, uh, you know, you don't in KwaZulu Natal, you don't often find this number of quartz crystals in one place. So we need to find the the source of the crystals, and then try and explain that first to ourselves, and then to the public, because they might be uh, more of these uh, points in along the Tugela, where the Tugela River cut very, very deep into the crust. Mm -hmm. We don't, you know, people don't realize that uh, the, the, the Tugela River actually follows a very big fault zone where a block of earth has been moved up to, uh, thousands of meters. And so we look at very old rocks in that section of kwazulu -Natal. I mean, what would that mean if there's uh, more than one area where there's a concentration of these quartz crystals? Well, one must remember that quartz veins are the last of the meltwaters in a volcanic or igneous uh, province. And so any minerals can concentrate with these quartz. So if you have this number of pure quartz crystals, then you must be very uh, vigilant as a geologist to see if there are not other precious minerals that are associated with these quartz. And that is where, where I think a mapping of that area becomes very, very important.
So, so it might be a sign of better things in the area. Is that what you're saying? Yes, and I think that is what the, 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 the member of the geoscience community mm. said this morning, is they are going to really look at this now with a fine comb, and they might come up with some very nice and, and very interesting answers on, on, on the, the source of these quartz crystals, uh, might uh, come you know, bring along some very good information for us in terms of other minerals that might be present in that area. In terms of uh, if the community there does continue to dig for the quartz crystals is there um the possibility of of damage to to the area to the landscape in kwaslati Yes, I think if, they, if they're going to just keep on haphazardly digging, uh, my, my impression as a geologist is that we're looking at the scree, a, 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 just a soil kind of containing a layer of these little crystals that have got a source somewhere, and they moved along the slope with what we call soil creep. So it's useless for people to use chisels and dig into the shale beds and the other rocks there. Uh, diamonds occur in a very, very specific rock called a kimberlite, and, and, and if there are no Kimberlites, it's absolutely useless to take a chisel and a hammer, hammer and, and break rocks because mm. there won't be any diamonds deeper down. Mm. I mean, you talk about uh, shale, the provincial government saying that it will now uh, begin studies to explore uh, things like resources like shale gas. You know, what do you make of this kind of opportunity for government? Yeah, I think uh, shale gas uh, has got an opportunity. Uh, I just personally, I, I'm very against uh, the exploration for soil or the methodology used mm. in in actually mining the, the shale gas. I think that is the only reason as a geologist, I'm, I'm, I'm very against the use of the methodology to mine the shale gas. But uh, yes, yes there, there, there might be a possibility there, in especially that part of Kuzernato. And I suppose just, just as we round up our interview, Dr. Grunewald, you know, if there are other opportunities presented by this discovery of quartz crystals, that the hope is certainly from the community of Kwaslati that they also in some way are able to benefit from that. Yeah, I think uh, it is very important that, first of all, there must be a clear establishment as, as who, who the, the, the land actually belongs to. Then that landowner must then, uh, I think it is time, high time for that landowner to uh, apply for a, at least a prospecting permit mm -hmm. so that one can prospect properly and then eventually mining permits. But then I would, I would like to see if it's, if it's communal land that uh, the, the, the profits from whatever is found there is distributed fairly to the entire community of Kwaslati and, and, and not just going into, you know, uh, single individual or company names. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Dr. Gideon Grunewald, thanks so much for your time this morning on the AIM report.